This video is proudly sponsored by Newtype. Tools, accessories, model kits, these guys have it. Hop over to NewtypeHQ.com and use the link below to help this channel out for future builds. The year is October 8, 2021. Everyone is feverishly looking at Nintendo's Direct to see what the next Metroid game was going to be, whether it was going to be a continuation of Metroid Fusion or possibly get a sneak peek of Metroid Prime 4. But no, 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 we got dropped a bomb, and that bomb was by far the most exciting game, Metroid Dread. <laughs> Well, my dudes and dudettes, as the year is coming to a close, I need to jump back into the wagon of building another kit bass, but we're going to be tackling something probably really unique, and that is going to be the Metroid Dread theme. Now, I was originally going to go with this theme literally when I did my first kit bash almost two years ago, but the kits weren't there. I had to work where I needed to work with, but for some reason, my interest of doing another kit bash that was related to Metroid was really palatable, and I needed to do something that was Metroid Dread related. Why? There is something really magical. Some Something really beautiful about the base uh, power suit that you get for Metroid Dread. And I love the choice of the color scheme they went with it, besides going with the classic orange, they went with more of a reddish blue texture to it. And just after playing the game literally almost three weeks ago from my time on and off of work, I had to really jump back into that. But I was a little bit of a dry spell at how I was going to pull off the helmet for SMS Iran. That wasn't until I came across AO Mecha from Threads posting when he did his very own Metroid Prime or just a Metroid kit bash on himself. And here's the wonderful thing about this unique build. He actually used tons and tons of kits from the Witch for Mercury lineup. I know, right? Who would have thunk it? You can use parts from Witch for Mercury to really build your own Metroid kit bash. This guy knocked it out of the park and it really inspired me to get into doing this particular build. But I made sure before I did my own kit bash, I got his blessing because I don't want anyone in the community to say that I'm copying any of his work. So once I contact him, I show him my work in progress, we were good to go. So let's talk about the kits we're gonna be using for this particular kit bash. I'm gonna be using the Aerial Gundam as the base, tall gates for the feet, and then tons and tons of Witch for Mercury model kits for the very top. Now you're probably asking yourself how I'm going to pull off the classic helmet. Now thanks to AOA Mecha, he recommended me the EMS S10 Zoha, and I did not know this kit was out in the market. If I would have known that sooner, I probably would have used this for my previous kit bash, but this design alone works perfect for the Metroid Dread theme. And you know what? I'm totally okay with that because let's face it, the first kit bash I did for this channel went out with no problems, and I have a lot to live up to making this as authentic and slightly better than my previous kit bash that I did literally almost two years ago. So, no pressure. But with that pressure being there, it's actually getting me more excited to actually do this particular design a little bit more proper. So what are the goals for this particular kit bash? Number one, we're gonna be using strictly masquerade and high grade parts followed by one 3D printed piece. Now I've made it a rule in my previous build that I was not gonna use 3D printed pieces because I deemed it as cheating. Seeing how the climate has changed between 3D printed pieces has drastically changed, especially now since we are literally starving for new Gundam kits. I think it's safe to say that this will totally be totally fine. Now, the particular 3D pieces I'm going to be using for this Gundam is going to be the Aerial Gundam Eyes, thanks to my good boy, Huff Gumpla. Now, I have tons of spare ones that he sent to me a couple months ago. I'm going to be utilizing for this kit bash. I'll definitely be using those pieces for a future kit bash, but for this one, it's definitely need to really pull off that visor look. Now, the thing with this particular Aerial Gundam is the chest piece and the visor is going to be really important to pull off that look. I'm not going to go 100% accurate accurate to like what you see on the video game. I'm going to be basically just putting it in my own style, my own little spin to it. But most importantly, pull off those nice little energy line ribbons that you would see in the very front part of the chest is going to be really key to pull off that classic Metroid Dread look. So without further ado, let's get started.
Alright, now that I got the aerial Gundam torso fully cut out, it's now time to cut out the remaining riders for the head. Now the head itself is going to require tons of modifications when it comes to actually putting this guy together. Since the proportions are going to be slightly off from the 1-100 scale to literally the high grade scale, that's not going to be a problem, but it's going to be definitely a challenge. Okay, so after doing some light test fitting for the aerial gun's head to the Zoha, this has actually worked totally fine, but there are some really awkward gaps in between the lower part of the chin and this awkward notch on the very top part of the head that's definitely going to be causing a problem when latching this guy all together. Now, the challenge to pull this off, I'm going to end up actually removing the aerial gun face mask because that's going to create less crowding when I put in the actual visor in there. But here's the challenging part. When I put an LED light in there to illuminate the eyes, that's going to be a big problem because I don't want to use the actual base eyes that comes with the Era Gundam. Thanks to my good boy Hef Gumble, he gave me some spare runners that he did from his previous build for the Era Gundam, and I'm going to use that for the eyes. Now, when you illuminate the eyes to this Aerial Gundam's head, this is going to be the big problem. The eyes are spaced out, which means when you refract a light through that clear piece, it's going to look very, very awkward. So you can get like these two hollow out glowing eyes protracting. I'm sorry, projecting towards the actual visor. So what I'm gonna need to do is cut out a slit towards the center of where the eyes meet in the middle. So that way I can create like a more wider aperture there. So now when it comes to the breeding apparatus, like tubes that go around the front part of the helmet, this is where the fun part kicks in. I am actually gonna be using some spare preposable fingers for my previous Master Ray build. I know it sounds crazy, right? But the structure and the actual angles is just right. This is gonna pull off the look just beautiful. So, without further hesitation, it's time to get these pieces prime time painted and ready to roll. Okay, so I'm gonna let these pieces sit in dryer for the next hour or two so that way everything sets in nice. Now comes the next challenge part and that's gonna be the chest area. Now, again, I'm not gonna go 100% accurate like how would see on the game representation. I wanna get something close to these nice little energy lines you would see in the very front part of the chest. Now, the wonderful thing about the area of Gundam is all that hard work is literally done, but I just need to mask out those areas with really thin pieces of masking tape. Alright my dudes and dudes, we have finally reached the next stage in this build and that's actually pull off the classic metallic look. Now I was originally going to cut corners and go with nice metallic blue and a metallic red, but after doing some testing, I did not like the refracting effect that you got from the red, it was a little too sparkly, didn't get a nice little punch red, was not happy with the results, so I told myself I'm just going to do this the hard way and do it the correct way. So we're going to do this in two stages, one we're going to use gold as the base coat and followed by with a clear red that goes on top of that. One coat's not going to work, you need to do two to three, possibly four coats to pull off that nice look and then for the blue we're going to go with a silver base followed by three to four coats of the clear blue. Now this application does vary between how you do it correctly, especially with the blue but if you take your time, you'll get amazing results.
Okay, so after spending close to three grueling hours, the effect came out just the way I imagined. I mean, oh my goodness, look at the contrast between how you're supposed to do it the right way versus the way that's a little too easy. The contrast is night and day, and I love the fact that this application works just the way how I imagined it. So, once again, does not hurt to do things the hard way, actually makes it easier down the road when you get better at perfecting that technique. And it's just as better when you pull off with the blue looks. So after doing some light test fitting, I am over the moon on how great this looks. Urgh, this looks absolutely sexy, man. I'm sorry I'm geeking out about this, but this could have turned out a lot worse than it was imagined it was gonna be, but I'm glad I went with this approach. Now, let's get started putting the LEDs on. So after I was taking a small break from my kit bash, I wanted to go spend time with my family, but at the same time, I could not stop thinking how I'm gonna pull off the shoulder blade look for this particular Metroid Dread kit bash. And believe it or not, the only thing that was a big problem was the circular parts that would sit in front of the shoulder blades. The Witch for Mercury has fantastic shoulder blade architecture structure. So the only thing that was missing was those small little circular pieces that sit in the very front and the very back. So this particular look will work beautifully.
Okay, so we're literally at the last stage in this build, and that's actually designing the legs for this particular kit bash. Now, the kits I'm going to be using is the Aerial Gundam, followed by the Calibine and Tall Geese. Now, the Calibine itself, I was going to originally use this in my previous video, but for some reason, I just lost interest, and I told myself, I'll just use this for spare parts for future kit bashes, and that's exactly what I'm going to use. I'm going to use some architecture pieces from this particular kit, and then apply it onto this kit bash. Now, the Aerial Gundam feet are good, but they're way too flat, way too angular. I need something to has like a nice foot, a nice tennis shoe like structure to that. Something that I was originally going to apply for my very first kit bash, and that's when the tall geese comes into play because one, there's these great little circular areas to sit around the ankles of the actual foot, which is great. It's going to be really, really important to pull off LED light uh, functionality, just like we can see here from this amiibo. But most importantly, it has great articulation when it comes to the ankle areas. Now, what I mean by that is there's very little cavity space in order to really pull off this look, but from this little test design I did a couple of weeks ago it's going to pull off the effect beautifully one you got the led light structure right there the bat the ankle uh, posability itself is perfect you get a nice front back swivel to the side to side but what's really going to be problematic is going to be the toe i can't get a full bend but just enough of flexibility there to where i can still pull off really cool dynamic poses but again that ankle swivel is so important to pull off really like cool powerful poses and that's what i really wanted to do so without further ado let me get these last pieces painted and then we'll get ready to install it all together So after eight grueling hours, the legs are finally installed onto the upper body, and man, it looks absolutely sleek. Oops, so happy the way out the head looks, as well as the shoulder blades. This 
could not come out better than I ever imagined. And again, there's still the problem with the front toe bend. That's fine. It's there to create stability, and I'm okay with that. And the overall color scheme and structure is on par like we get from Nintendo's Amiibo. So I am very happy how this is turning out. And I'm very eager to test this out when all the LED lights are fully ready to go. Now comes the most challenging part, and that's going to be the arm cannon. Now, I have, once again, I got to give a lot of respect to AOE Mecha because he is the sole reason why I got inspired to pull off this kit bash because my biggest concern was the arm cannon. I was able to pull it off from my very first kit bash, but this one is totally different, drastically a different design from Metroid Dread versus from Metroid Prime. So the iconic little circular part that's gonna sit in the very back, plus with the additional cool and warm, like yellow streaks that sit on the arm cannon is definitely gonna prove a challenge. But the fact that there's a Witch from Mercury kit out there that actually pulls off the structure itself beautifully, I'm very happy with that. The only downside is I won't be able to actually do a two transforming functionality with this, such as switching from the default arm cannon to, I think it's like the hyper cannon or hyper beam cannon, I forget what it's called. But that's not gonna be a problem. The challenging part is gonna be widening out the aperture wide enough and then put in something long enough to freight that nice little tunnel part or that nice little cannon shape in the very front part. I'll end up just using some spare like master grade like boosters to pull off that look itself, just like what I have here. Now the challenging part, and this was the one part I was really concerned when I was building this, is is this gonna be a little too thick? Is it gonna be a little too chunky? And after doing some test comparisons from my previous kit bash, it's not gonna be a problem. The challenging part is making sure that it sits just right in there where it doesn't compromise the structure from bending it up and bending it down. But the one part that really, really bugged me for my previous kit bash is I was not able to install an LED light in the arm cannon. It still bugged me to today and it still bugs me now and I wanna make sure that I pull this off the way I want it. Now, I, before I started to put this guy together, I did some one more test fest to see if I elongate it, maybe it'll look just right. And it kinda of does. The only downside is you get this unnecessary uh, gaps in between the back part of the cannon. And I don't like that. Even though there are some pieces that'll fit in there just nicely, the problem is it's just slightly too long. It looks very awkward. It just loses its art direction when it's said and done. So I'm gonna end up going with the first art direction like I did with the previous one and then follow up with to make it look more dynamic looking. Now let's get started and install the LEDs and get this guy ready to be painted. Mm -hmm. 